Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother almost kills herself by accident. Our next Reddit post is from No, not like that. My mother is the definition of entitled. She uses money and connections to avoid rules and laws. She expects everyone to cater to her, and she never worries about the consequences of her actions. Well, one day, her entitlement almost killed her. I had been prescribed Concerta for my ADHD. While I was at school, my mother decided to try my medication for herself. Since she's an idiot and she doesn't think the consequences apply to her, she split my medicine in half and only took one side of it. The medicine has two sides for a reason. One side is basically pure amphetamines, and the other controls the release of those amphetamines to be absorbed over the span of hours, not minutes. She took the side with just the amphetamines after having her usual three cups of coffee first thing in the morning. Long story short, she ended up in the hospital with a dangerous heart arrhythmia and nearly died. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Oh, and by the way, she wants my future kids to call her goddess because she doesn't like the word grandma. Our next Reddit post is from Clear Emollient. So, my boyfriend and I went camping this weekend at a campground, and we met this couple and their son, who was maybe 7 to 11 years old. I don't know, I'm bad at telling kids' ages. They were setting up their tent in the plot next to ours. We had some polite small talk, and we mentioned that we bought a tie-dye kit to tie-dye a couple of t-shirts while we were there. It was really just a small, cheap tie-dye kit, and we both brought two shirts to make. The mother immediately got excited and said that her son would love to tie-dye with us later that night. We were caught off guard, but I was sure there'd be some extra dye, and I didn't really care that much, so I said sure. A few hours of hiking and fishing go by, and we're ready to go back to our campsite to eat dinner and start making our t-shirts. We round the corner towards camp, and it was like this kid was waiting for us. He was standing on the path, and when he saw us, he sprinted back to the campsite. Once we got closer, his mother stomped over to the trail, and this is how the conversation went. Where have you guys been? We've waited hours! Uh, we've been hiking, but he can come tie-dye with us in a little bit once we set it up. I was totally caught off guard and turned off that she even approached me that way, but I blew it off again. Like, did this lady expect me to alter my plans all day to cater to her kid? We get to our campsite and I'm about to start dinner, but this woman and her kid are just staring at us. So I decide to just get the dye ready so he can bring his stupid t-shirt over and leave us alone so we can eat in peace. I bring the dye out and they come over to our table empty-handed. Looks great. He's a small or a medium. What? I don't have anything for him to use. I thought you had your own t-shirt that you wanted to dye. No, you're the ones who brought the tie-dye kit. We waited all day for you to get back, and now you're saying that you don't even have a t-shirt for him? I don't know what to tell you. We only have four t-shirts to make for ourselves. I can't believe you told my son that he could tie-dye and got his hopes up. He waited for you all day. Couldn't he have one of yours? Absolutely not, I said while laughing. It's not funny. Don't laugh at me. At this point, I'm just like, whatever, lady, and we keep snickering at her until they storm back to their campsite. Where? <laughs> Where she starts playing literal death metal music on full blast. It was hilarious. This chick was insane, throwing a full-blown tantrum and glaring at us from afar. An hour or so later, a ranger comes over to our tent and said that he got a report that we're drinking alcohol. We were drinking alcohol, but they typically don't care unless we're disturbing other campers. And we were just two people sitting and eating dinner quietly. I told him what happened, and the ranger thought that it was hilarious. And I jokingly said that I like to make a counter-report about the Entitled Mother's music. He was like, hell yeah, I'll do that, and went over to her. She threw a fit when he told her to turn that music down, and I heard her screaming about how we're partying and drinking, and how dare he confront her and not us. Eventually, her husband turned her music off while she was mid-screech. Then, she sulked into her tent and never came back out. The ranger came back over to our site for a beer after dark. We considered calling her poor husband over for a beer too, but we decided not to poke the bear, lol. Down in the comments, the user ThatBShea points out just how stupid this entitled mother's logic is. Why on earth would two traveling adults have a child-sized shirt laying around? What kind of creepy adults go camping with a kid's shirt just in case they run into a kid who wants it? This guy makes a really good point. What did the Entitled Mother expect them to say? Yeah, I've got some kids clothing for you. I've got a shirt, pants, and some underwear. What do you say, little boy? You want to tie-dye some undies? 
Our next Reddit post is from Warrior White. Why do women with kids feel so entitled just because they have kids? I'm a 30 year old female and I have an autoimmune arthritis condition. I walk with a cane. On bad days, I can barely walk at all. I have a handicap placard for those days. I had to go grocery shopping a while ago and I was in no condition to be walking a long distance. It wasn't a code red in terms of pain, but it was definitely up there. If I hadn't been completely out of a few major necessities, I wouldn't have been out at all. When I got there, all the handicap spots were full. I saw an older gentleman loading his trunk and I knew that spot would be available soon. So I pulled up, put my blinkers on and waited. When he was gone, I pulled into the spot, threw up my blue placard and began hauling myself out of the car. I was just about ready to close the door when I heard, EXCUSE ME! I look over to see a teal SUV pulled up behind me. There's this woman in the driver's seat yelling out the open passenger window at me. You just took my spot! Huh? I was waiting behind the other guy. I didn't see you. No, those are handicap spots. They're for handicap people. I am literally leaning against my car with my cane in hand. I hold up my cane. I am handicapped, ma'am. I have a permit. The entitled mother scoffed and pulled away. I decided to just forget about her and begin my hobble walk into the store. I got even more frustrated when I saw there were no electric carts available. So I was forced to grab one of the smaller trolleys and walk. Since I have a hard time pushing a cart one-handed, I put my cane inside the cart. I was only as far as the produce section when I heard a familiar voice. Hey, you! It's the entitled mother. She's pushing one of those big carts that look like cars for the kids. She had an infant and a toddler strapped inside the cart, another kid about two years old standing inside the cart, and yet another kid about five years old walking beside her and holding her hand. She was also very pregnant. She stalks up to me with this pissed off expression. You! You need to learn to be more respectful. I was waiting for that parking spot and you stole it! She's talking and yelling over her kids who are all fussing loudly. Lady, I didn't see you waiting for that spot. If you were, I apologize. I was waiting for it. I needed a spot close to the entrance. Because of you, I had to park all the way towards the back. Well, I said I was sorry. Besides, that was a handicapped spot. You can only park there with a permit. Are one of your kids handicapped? No, that spot was for me. I'm pregnant. Uh, lady, you can't use disabled parking just because you're pregnant. Not unless you have some sort of complication that affects your mobility. No, you can use them if you're pregnant too. I always use them. Uh, I don't think that's how it's supposed to work, ma'am. You're lucky you haven't gotten a ticket for not having a permit displayed. The entitled mother huffed. Well, you shouldn't be using it. You're not pregnant and you clearly don't have kids. No, I'm not pregnant, but I am disabled. Throughout this whole conversation, I've been leaning on my card for support. I pull my cane out for her to see. I said, I can barely walk 10 feet without pain. That's why I have a handicap permit. That's no excuse. You can't be in that much pain. I've been up all night with a colicky baby and I couldn't keep anything down because of morning sickness. I am exhausted. My feet are killing me. You don't know what it's like wrangling four kids while pregnant. I clearly needed that spot more than you do. I am more than done with this whole argument at this point. Look, lady, I'm in pain, I'm tired, and I just want to finish my shopping so I can go home and try to work up the will to make dinner tonight. I didn't see you waiting for the damn parking spot, and you shouldn't be using it without a permit anyway. Good day. I tried walking away. You selfish brat, you don't know what tired is. I'm going to report you to store security. I'll get them to tow your car. Lady, call security if you want. I'm allowed to park there. I didn't choose to become disabled, but you chose to have kids. It's not my fault that you're tired and run down and can't be bothered to walk the extra 200 feet to the door. It's not my fault that you chose to let some guy jizz inside of you. You deal with your life, I'll deal with mine. I hobbled off to try to finish my shopping, ignoring her parting comments. That fight gave me just enough adrenaline to get through the trip without falling apart. I was still pissed when I got home, but it was nothing that a long soak in the tub couldn't fix. I still hope that she gets a ticket for parking in handicapped spots, but as long as I never see her again, I'll be happy. <laughs> OP, regarding that line you said about her letting her husband finish inside of her, I always think about how if you tell people that you and your wife are trying to have a baby, they're all like, congratulations, good luck. <laughs> But if you say that you're raw dogging your wife and giving her sloppy cream every night, then people look at you funny. 
Our next Reddit post is from Maple Taffy Slush. I'm an 18 year old female. I live with my adoptive parents, and they're the sweetest people you'll ever know. For my birthday, my grandfather got me an iPad, an Apple Pen, and a drawing app that I've been asking for. I love doing digital art, and I was ecstatic when I got it. My mom was so excited for me and took me shopping to get a case and stickers to decorate it with. My friend, Amy, is the nicest person I've ever met. She's my closest friend, and I don't blame her for what happened. I would gladly take a bullet for her any day. Amy's also 18 years old. The person in this story who I despise is her witch of a mother. I'll call her Karen, because why not? Karen is 38, and she also has a 10-year-old son, Billy. Karen is a single mom, and she's made this the basis of her entire personality. She runs a failing mommy blog and used to post parenting videos. Oddly, she does believe in vaccination, and she doesn't think the earth is flat. She's still a very spiritual person and believes heavily in karma and creativity. She homeschools Billy and doesn't teach him how to read or write. She just teaches him about karma and things of that nature. Yesterday, Karen came over to drop off Amy so we could hang out and have a girl's day. My mom invited Karen over for coffee and gave Billy the TV remote. I immediately showed Amy my tablet, and we both started acting like idiots and talking about color palettes. Billy didn't seem to care, but I caught Karen looking at us weirdly from the kitchen. I ignored it because I figured that she was just watching Billy. A few hours later, it started to rain. It wasn't just a drizzle, it was a downpour, and there was no way that Karen could drive home safely. My mom told Karen that she and Billy could stay in the guest room and Amy and I could sleep in my dad's game room. Billy whined that he wanted to see the game room, but my dad has a rule that no one under 16 is allowed in because he has some scary games and concept art littered around. Karen protested lightly, but my mom shut her down and she dropped it. Billy had a full meltdown, so me and Amy went to draw in the crafting room. I decided to show Amy some of my scarier drawings and I pulled up a picture of a werewolf that I'd drawn. It wasn't gory or bloody, but it was scary. Amy and I love scary things, so we decided to make a piece together. We put on a 5 minute timer and we each took turns drawing. When we were done, we had drawn a vampire biting a girl's neck. We printed the picture and hung it up so we could decide on a color palette, but in the middle of selecting paints we heard the door open. Billy came downstairs, and at first he didn't notice the printed paper. Amy told him to leave, but he ignored her and went to try to grab my mother's colored pencils. We stopped him, and while we were dragging him towards the stairs, he saw the picture hanging on the corkboard. I didn't know something so small could make such a loud sound. Billy screamed his lungs out. Then he bit Amy's hand so she would let him go. Billy bolted up the stairs, and I took Amy to the sink to wash her hand. Within seconds, Karen was downstairs, and I could hear my mom trying to calm down Billy upstairs. What the hell did you do to my son? Amy said, we didn't do anything. I said, he came down here, so we tried to take him upstairs, but he flipped out and bit Amy's hand. No, what did you show him? At this point, we didn't even know that Billy had seen the drawing. What? We didn't show him anything. He just came down here and started screaming when we moved him. Don't you effing lie to me, you little turd. He told me he saw you drawing a murder. Oh, you mean our art collaboration? That's not a murder, it's a vampire. I looked over at the corkboard finally catching on, and Karen ran over to where she saw me looking. She ripped the paper off the corkboard and gave this really dramatic gasp. <gasps> she put a hand over her mouth and her eyes got wide. She looked ridiculous. Does your mother know what kind of filth you've been drawing? I was dumbfounded, so I just answered honestly. Uh, yeah? Karen looked even more offended and noticed my iPad on the table. If you're going to be drawing such inappropriate filth, then you don't deserve this. This maniac picked up my tablet and was about to walk back up the stairs. I snatched it from her and put it in my pencil bag. Karen tried to grab the pencil bag, but I pushed myself into a corner. My mom came down and said, What's wrong? You don't need to scream. My mom saw Karen trying to grab for me, so she ripped Karen off of me. I just want to say that my mom is a big lady. She towers over my dad, who's 5'10", and she's not dainty either. Karen immediately went on this tirade about how I'm corrupting her son and forcing him to look at disgusting garbage. She shoved the art into my mom's face, and she just kind of raised her eyebrows at Karen. My mom then turned to Amy. Did my daughter make your brother look at this? Amy replied, No, it was just hanging up and he saw it. I said, Also, he bit Amy's hand. I showed her Amy's bite wound, and I sent Amy upstairs to get a band-aid from the hall closet. My mom told Karen that she did not appreciate her behavior, and she asked her to take Billy and leave.
Karen looked pissed, and I swear, her face went beet red. Are you effing kidding me? She traumatized my baby! Your son is fine. He wasn't supposed to be down here anyway. It was an honest mistake, but I would like you and Billy to please leave. If you're going that way with it, then at least give my son the tablet. He's going to need therapy, and the tablet will help him express himself. My mom just rolled her eyes. Fine. She grabbed a sketchbook and handed it to Karen. Karen looked confused. Then she got angry and slammed the sketchpad onto the ground. No, you dumb witch! I want the one in her purse. My son needs it more than she ever will. If she's going to be drawing that cursed garbage, then she doesn't deserve it. My mom asked what sketchpad she was talking about, and I told her that Karen wanted my iPad. My mom looked surprised for a second, but then she just turned to Karen and told her to leave again. Karen was fussing and screaming, saying that I was disgusting and that my art was inappropriate. But my mom threatened to call the cops, and Karen just stomped upstairs. Amy said that she was going to stay, and Karen dragged Billy to the car. My mom sat us down and we went over the events. We all eventually ended up laughing, and my mom put some antibiotic ointment on Amy's bite just to make sure that it was clean. Amy's still here, and my mom says that she can stay in the guest room for as long as she wants. And then OP posted an update. Karen called my mom this morning while me and Amy were eating pancakes. We didn't hear the conversation, but mom told us that Karen said that she was throwing Amy's stuff away because she wouldn't support her little brother. My mom still says that Amy can stay for us for as long as she needs in the guest room, and we're trying to figure out how to ask if she can just move in. We definitely have enough space, but supporting another person might be a different story. Since Amy is 18, she can move out whenever she wants. The real problem would be retrieving Amy's sentimental items from the house. And then OP posted another update where, ultimately, Amy decided to move in with OP. After a while, we drove to Karen's house. Karen's house isn't very big, but she has a large front yard that was full of miscellaneous items. She saw us pulling up and thought that we were here to drop Amy off, but our escort surprised her. Karen had thrown some of Amy's things into the lawn, but it was mostly clothes and posters. Amy only picked up her scrapbook, and that was the only thing I saw before she went inside. Karen said that me and her mom weren't allowed on her property, so we waited in the car. I could hear Karen shouting, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. Amy wasn't inside for long, and she came out with her backpack and gym bag. Karen screamed at her to never come back and to never call her again, blah blah blah. We drove home, and me and Amy kept thanking my mom. When we got home, we unpacked some of Amy's personal items, and we're going to have an in-house spa day once my mom gets home from work. Karen tried to call Amy's phone, but Amy had already blocked her number. Alright, so first Karen yells at Amy to never call her again. <laughs> then, she immediately turns around and calls up Amy. I'm really starting to think that Karen isn't playing with a full deck here. In any event, OP, your mom is a true MVP here. Your friend was basically about to be homeless, but your mom backed her up and gave her a room in her house? That's super generous. I am really worried about Billy though. Things are not looking so bright for him. The kid is 10 years old and he doesn't even know how to read or write? I don't know too much about homeschooling, but isn't that illegal? Like, doesn't that constitute some kind of like child abuse or something? I don't know, it should be, right? Can anyone down in the comments give me some insight? Because this feels illegal, but I'm not sure if it actually is. I always thought that like, if a parent homeschools their kid, then they can teach them whatever curriculum they want, but they still have to meet some sort of like standardized testing requirement. So like all the standardized testing that kids get in normal school, I thought that it was the case that homeschool kids had to pass those too. Is, is, am I wrong? Is that not correct? That was r slash entitled parents. And if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.